Hey, what's up, guys? Today I'm going to be reacting to one of my favorite commentators. I watch him a lot. His name is Blackie Speaks, and he speaks about the music industry and stuff. Make sure you guys go ahead and subscribe to him. He's going to be talking about the music industry and why it's evil. This music industry is a God blessing. You need to stop it. God don't like that we in this music business. God don't like that we talking about money, cars, and clothes and hoes. So if you want to be in, the, be in this music industry and you want to get money, understand what it comes with. That it's not from God. It's, in the, it's from the devil. Understand? I just want you to understand that, you know, because I don't want y'all to get lost in the sauce and, 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 and complain what y'all going through and why y'all going through it. Period. It's not from God. Stop saying it's a God blessing. It's not from God. It's from the devil. He gives you what you want so you can destroy yourself. Now, what you saw right there was a video of 21-year-old singer slash rapper YK Osiris discussing some of the dark realities of the music industry. You might remember my The Rap Game is a Dark Place video I made last month, a video that of course was very well received by most, but it definitely upset a lot of people. Essentially, I was uh, in a way discouraging people from becoming rappers. It was almost like a bait or somewhat of a test because the people who got discouraged from pursuing their rap dream due to watching my video never wanted to become rappers in the first place. And those people simply don't have a strong enough reason to continue because my opinion and perspective of the rap game made them question their so-called dream. I think you understand what I mean when I say that. Every opportunity I get to highlight the reality of what really goes on behind the scenes in hip-hop, I'm gonna go out of my way to cover it. Why? Because most people simply don't talk about it. Believe it or not, it's a very taboo topic because what do we as rap fans see when we go on these rappers' Instagrams? All we see is millions of followers, millions of likes, constant flexing, jewelry on fleek, multiple cars, an extremely fast life, rappers doing the money phone, etc. Etc. There just isn't enough focus on the other side, which is the most important side, because that's what makes an artist human. That's what makes them relatable. It ain't the flashy jewelry. It ain't the cars. It's the sensitive side, the more human, honest, and real side that they either choose to show or, like a lot of rappers do, hide. So a friend of mine actually sent me this uh, little rant YK Osiris had, and he asked me what I thought about it. My response: I see where he's coming from, but this is coming from the wrong place. Let me explain what I mean. See, what YK Osiris said is 100% the truth. A lot of rappers talk about how they love. God so much, but at the same time, they worship their material possessions. Not only that, but they also, you know, brag about their sins on their songs and influence millions of people with their words for good or for bad. By the way, I just want to make this very clear. I'm not religious. I'm not trying to make this video sound like some kind of holy ceremony or anything like that. I listen to these kind of rappers. I listen to that kind of music. I'm just trying to make a point and connect what he said to hip hop continuing. The point is, YK Osiris is not lying. But then again, let's not forget this. It's all about what you do with that fame, money, and power that you garner when you become a successful rapper. And this is actually something I wish I would have mentioned in my, you know, the rap game as a dark place video. Even though I'm one of those people who talk about the dark truths of the rap game, I also gotta say this, you don't have to go that route. There's a lot of rappers who are well known and eating off of their craft, but they've still preserved their morals and values in the midst of getting there. To be honest, I would say that the majority of rappers won't actually ever get there. Because at some point, okay, most rappers, they make some kind of sacrifice for the quote unquote greater good, which in reality might not be so good because the greater good involves you essentially signing your life away and becoming a slave to the corporations aka the labels because you want to elevate your rap career not knowing there's a price to that and just to keep it 100% real most rappers are not ready to do that of course they do it anyway because that multi-million dollar check the label is waving in front of them is so tempting they're willing to throw away their integrity and ethics just to reach the top these are the same rappers you hear complaining about how they don't like being signed to a label now why does this happen this happens because they're trapped they signed a contract and now realize that the idea of being signed isn't so pretty anymore and breaking the contract ain't an option. Like, y'all talking about drop something, at least I'm trying to drop something. I drop new paddock, like that shit ain't getting leaked. I've been trying to drop some, bro, this is my life now. All I can do is make music and sit back and wait for y'all response and make visions to the shit. If you think I don't want to drop music, you just gotta understand. Let me tell you something. When people don't love you, they'll hold your life if you sign them up. That shit against you. And that go for the streets too. Like, I know something. You ain't supposed to sign no motherfucking paper in the streets because that's ratting. So, why the fuck I even sign this shit as a deal? 
A lot of rappers sign contracts with one underlying and concealed agreement. If you don't deliver to this label, we have no use for you, so you better hurry up and produce. But here's the thing, these labels know that these young rappers they're signing do not know their worth. A lot of these guys think a $2 million deal is what their life is worth, and really they're just signing their life away, that's what they're doing. I want to show you this other rant YK Osiris did where he talks about just this. What happens when you become a signed artist? Let's check it out. Sign. Soon as you sign that contract and get that money and take that money, you sold your soul. So all that mimic talking about, oh, oh, he sold his soul, she sold his soul. If you sign that contract, if you sign a contract and got that money, you sold your soul. Period. Point blank period. Soon as you sign that contract, you sold your soul. When you do that contract, say do all this and do all that, and if you don't do it, you gonna get put on the shelf. You sold your soul. Crazy. These people will worship and praise our artists, but will not praise God. That's crazy. They will faint, they will scream, shout. <sighs> Let me stop talking, man. Obviously, he isn't really saying anything we don't already know, but I do think it was about time a young artist brought this up because a lot of young rappers fall for this trap, and it's not just the rappers who fall for the trap. You are probably falling for this trap. Everything ain't glitter and gold. Everything ain't so flashy and joyful behind the scenes because that's where a lot of artists in this game start contemplating and asking themselves whether or not they made the right decision by signing that contract so they could instantly better their life due to that advance money. Of course, the reason why I like this video is because let's talk about the comparison between the music industry and YouTube contracts too. A lot of people don't talk about YouTube contracts. So when I got my first contract with YouTube, um, I think, how much money was I making? I think I was making like $50 every couple months. Now it's different. Um, I'm probably making more than that every month. But uh, the reason why I don't know is because I went independent. And I work a regular job, and like I'm about to go to the military, so I don't really, you know what I mean. I'm in school, so I'm not, I'm not reliant on YouTube. So I do it as a hobby, and like if there's money, there's money, but I'm not like necessarily thinking about it. You know what I mean? Um. So let me put it like this: How can I see it? Um. With the music industry, it's like. Like you said, you get put on a shelf if you don't meet the requirements of the contract. And they pay you like $2 million. Well, with YouTubers, I feel like it's even worse because once they give you that contract, and if you don't get big enough, you absolutely get no help. It's bad enough you have no communication with the platform itself. But you get completely thrown in the trash. The algorithm may be pitted against you. You may get blacklisted. Like, with YouTube contracts and MCN contracts, which I think aren't around really that much anymore. Um, I fell into the trap of signing a contract. and you, I lost a lot of money just from my first contract. Um, and then it caused me to be kind of like a slave to YouTube. Like, like I had to make a certain amount of videos. Now I just make as much videos as I want on my own. But I feel like it's kind of similar like if you don't perform, like it can look bad on you in the end and you sold your soul to this corporation. Like you you sign this contract with this MCN and then you work through Google YouTube and you have to upload videos and if you don't, you don't get paid or um, they don't promote you and it becomes a it just becomes a vicious cycle with the music industry. If you don't perform, they just shelf you and don't try to help you, don't push you, you're done. So it's it's crazy, man. It's crazy. And some similarities to the YouTube game and the music game. Uh, I will say with YouTube though, it's like it's not that big of a deal. Like it's not like they're giving you an upfront check, so you don't owe anybody anything. It's just that you will lose money from you will lose money that you actually made. So like with YouTube, like let's say you make two hundred dollars a month. Well. If you've got to give your MCN 45%, you know, then you do the math. You're not making that much. So it's stuff like that. 
course, if we look at it from a long-term perspective, that advance money won't benefit you in the long run. But listen up, it will benefit the rapper who's signing that contract instantly. If you come from a background where there wasn't a lot of money, even worse, if you come from a background where there wasn't any money, declining that million dollar contract is not gonna be easy. No matter if I think signing a contract as a rapper in 2019 isn't smart because you can do it on your own, maybe signing that contract as, let's say, this young rapper is the thing that changes his life. And that's another thing. That's what hip hop and rap has done for a lot of artists. And that's the beautiful thing about it. This genre has literally made people who would have otherwise been behind bars, been inside the penitentiary, multi-millionaires in the span of a couple years. And a lot of these rappers get to buy their mama a house. They get to cop a new whip for the homies thanks to signing that contract. So the question is now, was it worth it? Depending on how you look at it, yes and no. There's not only a lot of contrast in this conversation, there's a lot of angles, aspects, and perspectives we have to bring up because at the end of the day, we're talking about individual experiences. Maybe YK Osiris is just now getting a taste of the negatives that come with the music industry because he's actually a signed artist himself. But then again, let's not forget this. It's all about what you make it. This really, really applies to YK Osiris himself. And why is that? Because in March 2018, when he signed to Def Jam and he got his advance money, what was the first thing he did? What, what do you think he did? The first thing he did was not investing in his craft so he could make some more money and pay off that advance loan money because that's exactly what it is. Advance money is nothing but a loan. They give you that big check because they're expecting a return on their investment. That's why artists have to release a certain amount of albums under a label whenever they sign that contract because according to the label's calculations, they're not only going to make back the money from the specific amount of albums they signed this artist for, but they're also going to make back more than they've invested into this artist. And that people, that's exactly how these major labels are still in business. But I digress. Going back to what he did with the advance money he got, what do you think he did? Well, he went into the Louis V store and spent about $15,000 of his advance money to buy some designer clothes and already there, he set himself up for failure. I'm not saying that he as an artist is a failure, absolutely not. I'm saying that considering what he himself said about the music industry, I see why he ended up feeling this way at the end. There's a price to everything we do in life, especially when we're talking about signing to a record label where you end up becoming nothing but a means to an end. Obviously, that's not what always happens, but yes, the music industry and especially the rap industry could be considered evil. But at the end of the day, every single rapper and artist who finds some kind of success in this business has a lot of control over their destiny, more than you would think actually. It all just comes down to the person itself. What route are you going to take? That's what it comes down to. And that's the last point I wanted to hit on. I don't really have more to say about this. What do you think though? Definitely let me know in the comment section below and let's have a discussion about this. Another, another great video by him. I agree with everything that's been said in this video. Like I said, guys, um, you definitely, you, if you are an artist or a creator in any way or form, and you're making money off of it, really consider going independent, doing the work long term, and walking away with the check, or, you know, for the rest of your life, being able to make money through your own means and not necessarily with a middleman, you know, it's direct with me. I don't have a middleman anymore. I don't distribute through full screen or any network. It's just straight Google, straight from Google AdSense to me, you know, and uh, other things like merch, music. I mean, unfortunately, with music, you do have to go through a distributor. There's just no way because the music industry is so corrupt. And I have a couple songs out there just making royalties. I'm not like big into music, but I have some songs that have made money. And I would say that it's it's better to be independent. You know, it's it's just better. So I would rather you go through like um, SoundDrop or I don't know, just like a platform, you know what I mean? That you can um, distribute your music independently and don't have to have like a record label that gives you an advance check and then if you don't perform you owe them money plus they shelf you you know so uh, anyways hope you guys enjoyed this video on what I had to say about the music industry and just the entertainment industry in general and uh, peace <laughs>